Several years ago, I called a commercial real estate broker about a property he had listed. You see, I was in the process of buying a manufacturing business and I wanted to move it closer to my home. The property in question had been a factory for over a hundred years. It was in a great location and I even liked the asking price. When I told the broker why I wanted to buy it, he actually refused to show it to me. He said he was obligated to sell it to someone who would use it for the highest and best purpose. In his mind, that meant converting the industrial space into loft apartments. I really wanted to tell him that there wouldn't be any tenants if there weren't any places for them to work. But then I found another location I liked more and, and that happened before I had the chance to argue with him about it. Today, the building is an apartment complex, so I guess he won in the end. But, uh, but now I spend a lot of time evaluating businesses that are for sale. The businesses I get involved with almost always require a physical location to operate. And that means real estate is almost always part of the deal. There's three common situations I see. One, the business owns the real estate and it's shown as an asset on the balance sheet. This is often the hardest situation resolved and it is actually the reason I'm making this video. But before we get to that, let's talk about the other two situations. The second is when the owners of the business own the real estate, but it's not shown as an asset on the balance sheet. It's often the best situation. It means that they own it as a separate entity and that they're somewhat sophisticated. But it can also be a bad sign. If, for example, they're paying themselves a reasonable rent, it's great. If they're paying way too much rent, they're evading taxes and you really should look closely at all of the other business expenses for tax fraud. If they're paying too little rent, well, then you're going to have to include a rent increase as part of your offer, which they're not going to be happy with. The simplest situation is when someone else owns the real estate. The rent is the rent, and it's truly a separate negotiation if you decide you want to own the real estate and you want to buy it from them. So here's why businesses that own the real estate are so problematic. Yeah, okay, so the real reason I'm making this video is because I can't say to them, are you freaking kidding me? You just can't say that. I looked at one this week. It was a good business. After evaluating the financials, I could say that the business was worth between six and a half and seven and a half million dollars, you know, depending on the terms the seller was willing to accept. The asking price was 7.9, so it wasn't crazy. It wasn't impossible. But they also wanted 10.2 for the real estate. For any real estate investor to pay that much for the property would have to be generating about $100,000 a month in revenue, which is just a little bit more than the business was reporting in gross sales. So why did the sellers want so much? Well, I don't know this, but I'm guessing it's because they heard there was another building about the same size in about the same region that sold for that much. And what's the problem with that? Well, no real estate investor would ever pay more than the property could support in rent payments. If the $7.9 million business is not paying rent, the real estate it occupies is not worth anything. If it is paying rent, the value of the real estate is based on the rent. But okay, what if the business isn't fully utilizing the property and it could be developed further? That's fine. If you're the buyer and you also want to be a real estate developer, I've got some property in Florida for you. I'll even locate a pet rental business on it if you want. This is Professor Bergstrom. I just wanted to talk about real estate and business.